Hi, uh, everyone. Uh, I'm Jin Ting Chen. Uh, I'm a senior software engineer in uh, software en engineer in software AG, uh, doing the thing and build project development. And really, thank you for this meetup that I can have a chance uh, to introduce the thing ML. So today uh, I'm going to do a demo of setting up a normal detection model on an edge device. And I will start with the introduction of the thing ML, then uh, the use case which is a normal detection on um, network intrusion. Then uh, I will do a deployment workflow, which is using ThingML and by leveraging ThingAge IO techniques. So finally, uh, the live demo, uh, I will walk through all the steps of the deployment to let the edge device providing on device analytical results. Um, so, uh, in the enterprise or industrial IoT space, uh, machine learning has become a key focus for a company by enabling them to generate valuable, res uh, valuable insights uh, from vast array of sensors on machine, assembly line, and industrial robots. So one of the biggest challenges in large-scale industrial machine deployment today uh, is to keep track of the functioning of the machines so uh, and trying to minimize the downtime. So combining uh, machine learning uh, with the deep flow of data generated by a flood of newly connected devices brings huge benefit by making predictive maintenance possible. So AI-powered IoT devices can proactively detect different type of event through its local sensor data and trying to take action without human intervention. The events uh, could be a potential failure or external threat, a threat or simply something that's just require minor tuning. By reacting this kind of events in an automatic real-time and intelligent way, the downtime of device can be minimized and which eventually helps um, maintenance cost saving. So here is why we have the ThingML to help edge device become smarter. Uh, ThingML uh, actually is a, a library leveraging ThingAge IO techniques to help user deploy machine learning model on edge devices. Then uh, with the machine learning model being deployed, uh, ThingML immediately enable edge device the capability of generating analytical results. ThingML itself uh, is similar, has a similar concept like a tiny ML, but without a lot of software compilation efforts. So using tiny ML might need each specific view for different algorithm in different microcontrollers. But now uh, ThingML support ARM32, uh, ARM64 device, and in this type of device, it is not constrained in very specific type of uh, algorithm as long as your deployed model is exported in all the next formats. So uh, here I provide one use case uh, to demonstrate what ThingML can provide. And this use case here is aiming for detecting network intrusion. So we use the botnet uh, uh, dataset. It has uh, 115 features, including many different attributes from a text source and um, network packets. The dataset has labeled 10 type of attack and the one benign. And a bot in this dataset means uh, a compromised device being penetrated from a malware, and the malware may utilize a compromised IoT device to, st to steal sensitive data or even trying to send uh, the ransom software attack. And this creates security crisis in the IoT space. So as mentioned in previous slide, uh, detecting possible attacks before it becomes a real problem will help to prevent uh, catastrophic consequence and help a business to avoid unexpected loss. So we use this data set. Uh, it could be trained as a anomaly detection model, uh, for example, like one class SM, SVM. The model can help an edge device uh, to monitor network status, 
knowing is now in benign or is under attack. Uh, besides a number detection model, we can also um, um, uh, enhance the age device further using a classification model. So here, it's for example, like a random forest that's different from a number detection model. This is a classification model that can help each device to be not just knowing that yes, no to the attack, but also identifying different type of the attacks. So we know uh, that ThingML can provide different type of analytical results according to the type of model we deployed. So now in our case, I'm using one class SVM uh, to detect possible bots and the possible attack. So here I'm going to uh, mention that the process how we enable machine learning capability on each device. So the first of that immediately we need will be a model. Then we a uh, machine learning model could be trained and validated by various model training tool, such as scikit-learn, PyTorch, TensorFlow, R package carriers, or uh, micro, uh, the machine learning workbench, which is also one of the microservices provided from Cumulosity. And once model is trained and exported in an ONS file, then we wrap the file as the machine learning artifact turbo package. Then we're trying to upload the table to the Cumulosity software repository. The next step, uh, use the Cumulosity, uh, Cumulosity Management Console to push the machine learning model to all the connected edge devices. So uh, now edge devices have their own machine learning computation capability. Then finally, each device can start to generate its own analytical result by feeding its own raw sensor data to the just deployed model. So the Cumulosity Management Council can see the anomaly score and the prediction from the model. And then in this demo, uh, I was trying to execute a simulator on each device to simulate the situation that uh, each device generate its sensor data, then proceed on device computation, then send back the analytical results via NQTT channel back to a uh, cloud. So uh, here I will do a demo. Now uh, what I have right now is the uh, uh, one class SBM uh, model that is exported in ONX format and that is trained from a data set. Then we, what we did is trying to uh, zip it into a, a machine learning artifact table. So we do the models, pipelines, resource, and into a, a table. So now we have that file already. Then we do, we go to the Cumulosity. Uh, control panel, we go to a software repository, then we uh, have a so the machine learning model that we just uh, generate. Artifact. Then we put the description, detection model, then we know if the teenage device then uh, just uh, uh, different from the APT software install, we use uh, ThingML right now. Then we know this is a non-meditation model version one. Then the most important thing, we need to have the tail version here and the mentioning of the ThingML. Then the web that uh, each device knows that right now we are deploying the machine learning model. So once this is up though, we add the software. And now we can go to the devices. And this is the demo device we have. And we can check now. It already has the uh, thin edge uh, uh, installed and connected to the cloud. And we also have the thin ML base. Um, already installed that have uh, let device have ability capability to deploy the model. Then right now what we're gonna do is to deploy the model. 
So we select the one we just uh, uploaded, then we apply the change, and now uh, the Cumulacity Cloud will help us to push the machine learning artifact directly to the edge device. Let's try to refresh. Okay, yeah, actually it's already laid. Then we can see uh, you will have some of the uh, information from here. But now uh, we would like to go to the carpet that I already create a graph that can help us to see the uh, sensor data easily. So right now we don't have any sensor data because I haven't started the simulator. Then right now I'm going to start a simulator. we will start to do the on-device uh, computation. Okay, so uh, right now I have the simulator ready and generate a lot of sensor data. Right now I still put that on cloud because I would like to let uh, users to see that uh, in the beginning, if you don't have the machine learning model, then you will see a lot different kind of the raw data from uh, raw sensor data from the device. And uh, if we send in all this raw data back to cloud, it will kind of like generate uh, the network bandwidth. But right now, if we provide the machine learning capability on device, we can get rid of all these raw sensor data, but we just only provide the anomaly uh, situation like, OK, the, the red uh, value here is the anomaly label showing like, OK, right now at the same time you are still safe in B9 status, or maybe some of situation you may under attack that you need to take some act, uh, action from that. And the, another part is the anomaly score that you can see is high or low to knowing the uh, label of the possibility of the attack. So, um, this is uh, the demo that we would like to show, and with uh, uh, on-device computation, we send back just only the insights of the situation, then we can all get rid of this kind of the raw sensor data sending back to the cloud. So this is the uh, demo, and uh, thank you all for uh, listening to this uh, uh, slide, and thank you.